Welcome to San Diego Market Movers. I'm your host, Valley, and I'm here with Sarah Ward. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Okay, so I know you work with a lot of investors. Yes. And if someone is a high income W-2 wage earner, where should they put their money? Where should they invest? Fantastic question. And it's a really interesting answer. So when you have a high income W-2, your biggest problem is really how much you're paying in taxes, right? Your percent taxable income. So when you're looking for an investment strategy, you're weighing, you know, out of state investing, long term rentals, stuff like that. So if you have just a standard rental property, you're going to take a loss on that property for the first 10 years. And it's because of depreciation and stuff like that. We don't need to go that deep. Um, but all of those losses on long term tenants are considered passive income losses. So you can't subtract those from your W-2 gain. But there's this cool tax loophole you can do. So if you have like an Airbnb property and your average tenant stay is seven days or less, and you're the, the one that's contributing the most to that property, so you don't have a property manager, you're running the business, then you can have the losses from that property count as active income. So it's gotta be seven days or less total stay, and you have to be the one that contributes the most to the property. Then we move those uh, losses on the property into your active income losses, and that can actually subtract from your W-2 income tax liability, reduce your taxes, and that'll give you the biggest bang for your buck on real estate investing. And do you need one or the more you have, the more money you make, the more you should do this? The more you make, the more you should do this, right? Because you're just racking up those losses against that income, but just one can make a huge difference. And if we want to get a little more complicated on it, you can actually do what's called a cost segregation strategy, and you can front load even more of your depreciation, take a bigger loss in year one or year two, and have a huge tax savings. So if you have like a particularly big year, like maybe you get RSUs and your company's doing really well, then buying an Airbnb, doing a cost segregation strategy, front loading that depreciation, writing it off against your active income, suddenly your tax liability goes way down in year one. That's amazing. Let me make <laughs> so much information that people need to know and utilize this. No one wants to pay taxes, right? So use this strategy. You explained it well. Yeah. I mean, we all say it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So creating these investment strategies around your taxable income it's really important, actually. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing, Sarah. Yeah, thank you for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.